From testing positive for an illegal substance to being accused of using an IV drip to rehydrate, it seems like Islam Mahachev isn't having a very good time. He was recently accused by Dan Hooker after successfully defending his UFC lightweight title against Alexander Volkanovsky. Of the, world. the player is being accused of cheating. He beat Volkanovski at UFC 284 after a super intense fight. A unanimous decision gave him the win, even though literally everyone else wanted a rematch. But things got even more out of hand when Hooker came forward with the allegation. He claimed that the fighter did something illegal to win the match. He might have gotten an IV to rehydrate before his first defense of the belt. He went on a rant on Twitter and told his suspicions to the entire world. He called him a lying dog because he believes that when the athlete doesn't use tricks to get what he wants, he loses. The lightweight contender, who lost to Mahachev by submission in 2021, didn't take any names. But we all know who he was talking about. When a confused Twitter user asked Hangman to explain, he called Islam out, confirming once and for all who he was referring to. United States anti-doping made a lot of changes to the policies. They included a ban on IV infusions and or injections. The league's officials have made it pretty clear that fighters who continue to use intravenous fluids would be banned for two years. After a long silence on the matter, Islam hasn't added anything, but his team has. We all know he's still the lightweight champion, and that's no small feat. Mahashev trying to set up a submission here, DC. Yep, and you know, these guys do combat sambo their entire lives, you know, so if you present an opportunity to get a sub, it's over. He'll go get it. There it is. He's got the arm. And there's the tap. Another big finish for Islam. He defended his title against one of the best fighters in the MMA. Kind of a stumble from Islam, but it doesn't matter. Hit the ground over the same. It's an overhand left to a trip for Berkowski on that one. He's really picking up the pace now. So these allegations came out as a bit of a shock to everyone. UFC 284 has come and gone, but the debates and conspiracy theories rage on. His opponent had been the featherweight champion and moved up to the lightweight division to fight him. Most people agree that the great fought with enough courage to deserve to win. Even though he won the match, he had a bad night overall because two judges gave Islam a win by a score of 48-47 and a third judge gave him a win by a score of 49-46. After the claims came forward, one of Mahachev's managers, Rizvan Magomedov, told the players' fans that the claims are completely made up. He called the accuser a total loser who's just being mean and wants to be in the spotlight. While Hooker has never had bad feelings towards any of his opponents in the ring, his accusations turned a lot of heads. Even though Volkanovski lost his first title fight, he still holds the featherweight title and is looking forward to a rematch. In an interview, the champion said that he didn't see many differences in size between the two and made fun of the IV comments. He hasn't said whether or not he believes them. Despite everything, fans still aren't sure. They clearly saw the needle marks on his arm after the rumors and everyone's speculations. Islam's manager talked to the media and explained why the champion had needle marks on his arm, which were pretty clear, and fans saw them. This fight made him the best in the world at his weight class. Dan Hooker tried to make make everyone doubt the verdict. Volkanovski had to gain weight to 155 pounds so he could compete with Islam. There was a big difference in size. But even though people said the Russian wasn't making weight and was using a towel at weigh-ins, he came in at exactly 155 pounds. Mahachev's manager set everyone straight on the allegations, though. And it seems like Hooker is just salty about his loss and that this was just him trying to get attention. I wouldn't trust that guy at all, and it doesn't seem like his theories are panning out. But fans have been asking about the marks on his arms. Fortunately for the athlete and his team, his manager set the record straight and told us that it was from a blood test from the commission. While everyone else can't help but make speculations about the claims, about Hooker's intentions, and about how true or false everyone's explanations are, Volkanovsky has had a different approach. He's been joking around about it. After saying that he was just picking on him a little, he joked that an IV infusion 
explosion could help anyone gain up to 83 kilograms. Since 2015, when USADA started working with the UFC, intravenous infusions and injections of more than 50 cc in six hours have been banned. Anti-doping rules don't apply to fighters who got an intravenous line because they were hospitalized, had surgery, or were taking part in a clinical study. Paulo Costa, a middleweight in the UFC, was the last fighter to be punished for using an IV. He was banned for six months in 2017 for using an injection twice. All fighters who test positive for IV use get a two-year ban, but Costa's ban was cut to one year because he worked with the USADA. Unfortunately for Islam's fans, this isn't the first time he's had a problem like this. He tested positive for a banned substance. The super athlete was once kicked out of the game because he tested positive for meldonium, which is a drug that helps people perform better. After 23 fights, the Dagestani grappler had his chance at gold. And you know, he never disappoints. His fight in Abu Dhabi, where he's very popular, was super amazing, and it did wonders for his career. The crowd being in his favor was a huge advantage for him, too. There's no doubt that his career has had a few small setbacks, both inside and outside of the octagon. Seems like we've seen a change in strategy for Dober trying to get offensive here off of his back. Look at the shoulder pressure, though. Look at Dober's face. Oh, oh, yeah. oh, <laughs> Islam Akashev submits wow. to Dober. The biggest was a temporary ban put on him back in 2016 because he failed a drug test. In the end, though, USADA cleared him. But fans were worried because his fight with Drew Dober at UFC on Fox 19 was called off. On the day of the weigh-in, the association banned the substance for about three months before it was announced that he had tested positive for the chemical. This wasn't that big of a deal, and it was obvious it wasn't Islam's fault. Before January 2016, the chemical was legal, but it was taken off of the market after it was found that many athletes used it in their PED cycles. When tennis star Maria Sharapova tested positive for it in 2016, it shot to the top of the sports world. She said that her doctor told her to take the medicine to treat her diabetes and lack of magnesium. Islam stopped using the drug before the ban went into effect in 2016, but Sharapova was caught using the drug after the ban went into effect. She got a punishment that was worse than what her MMA counter part got. The International Tennis Federation banned her from competing in international tournaments for two years. The USADA doesn't play around. They take their policies very seriously. After reviewing the case in detail, the association decided that the very low amount of meldonium in the athlete's urine sample was consistent with the use before the substance became officially banned. He didn't have to sit out for a while because of his positive test, but he wasn't punished as severely as the tennis player was. Fans of the sport know how important rules are in any game. It's up to the athletes to make sure that they follow them and for the associations to make sure that they do. It seems like Islam isn't in much danger this time around, but he does need to work on his image to make sure that something like this never happens again. That's all we have on what's been going on with Islam Mahachev. See you in the next one.